Hello YouTube, uh, we're going to go over a basic double integral practice problem. Um, this double integrals are kind of, they're fun to do, they're like doing two problems, two integral problems in one, hence double integral. Um, but it's also like a double-edged sword, so you'll kind of see what I mean. But first, we'll just do a basic one and hopefully it won't be too bad. Okay, so here's the function you're asked to integrate, um, and here are the bounds that you're given. Um, so in three-dimensional calculus, uh, you're, say you're given a three-dimensional graph. I'm trying to make this as 3D as possible, so it's more like a cube here, but there's going to be a graph on the inside that could look something like this. Um, but note that this is not the function. I'm just showing an example right now. Um, so pretend this is just kind of like a hill or a mountain, and you can go like down the mountain. So I'm just trying to give the three-dimensional depth here. Um, but you get the picture, I guess. So what we're going to be asked to do is integrate, and in multivariable calculus, when you integrate, it's calculating the volume. So it's as if you're calculating the volume of what's inside the hill, I guess. Um, but for now, we're going to just do a simple example, and that simple example is going to be um, pretty much we're going to have a closed region, so bounds. So let's just say you wanted only... Um, from this half or this portion of the volume. I remember this is three dimensional, so that's why it's volume instead of area. Um, so that's just what we're going to be working with here. Okay, remember, note that this is not what the function looks like. It actually looks something like this. Well, something like that. So it's kind of like a cup, sort of. Um, so this darker area is kind of shaded, so that means it's kind of coming at you. It's it's hard to draw, on, but I did my best. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to graph the bounds of the region. And it's pretty simple. The bounds uh, that we're given here, you should know how to graph. I mean, they're pretty simple. Y equals X, so the slope is 1. Um, X equals 2, so that's a vertical line. X equals 0 is simply the Y axis. Oh, I should label that. Okay, um, so then uh, just for specifics, you should calculate what the intersection points are. And remember, you would just set the functions equal to each other, and this point would be 2, 2. And this is obviously at the origin, so that would be 0, 0. Okay, with that said, this is our bound. So the area in the enclosed region, we're going to be searching for what's in here, All right? So there's two different ways. Well, there's many different ways, but two that we're going to go over that you can do this. Um, you can integrate. This is the basic integration um, outline. So you can integrate with uh, dy dx or dx dy. But what's the difference, right? So the difference is that when you're integrating with um, respect, so d, let's do dy dx. dy dx, you would have rectangles going up, an infinite amount of rectangles going from top to bottom, and if you were doing dx dy, you would be integrating um, from left to right, right to left, so you'd be having horizontal rectangles, an infinite amount of them. So remember what area is adding, um, or calculating the integrals adding up um, an infinite number of things, and in this case these things are rectangles and you could kind of think of it as like Riemann sums kind of thing you could probably calculate these like I don't know that's just too much theory let's get down to brass tacks okay so for the first part what I always do is I cut off the uh, I guess I separate the inside as so um, and right now since this is respect to y that means your limits of integration have to be with respect to y as well. So what I always do, and what I'd recommend, sorry, it got cut. So what I recommend you always do is write y, oops, I'm this working, y equals y equals. And same thing for the outer limits of integration. So this is just with respect to x, you should put x equals and x equals. So I'll do that for the other one as well. So notice how this is with respect to x, that means these should be x. Since this is with respect to y, that means these should be y's. Okay, 
So that's just the simple outline. You should do that for every integral you get because you're going to need this for later. But for right now, we need, to calc we need to figure out what the bounds are. So let's look back at the graph here. We are trying to calculate the area or bounded by this region, so we have a triangle. Since our first part we're going to do, we're going to work with respect, uh, we're just going to do this portion first, dy dx. So notice how these are y equals, so that means we need to find the portions here that are y equals. Okay, this is y equals, and our other y equals is y equals 0 here. So if you remember from regular calculus or just 1D or 2D calc, um, when you integrate a function, you would do top minus bottom, right? So whatever the function is hitting at the top of the rectangle, you would subtract it from what's hitting at the bottom. Um, so same thing applies. Um, so say, what's the top for this function? y equals x. The first thing I hit at the top is y equals x, and at the bottom is y equals 0. So those are my limits of integration for the inside function here. So I'm going to put those in. There you have it. So remember this was top minus bottom. Right? I just decided to put in the function since just to make it look uh, more clear to you guys, but we'll deal with that part later. But right now we're focusing on limits of integration, let's, so let's go back. So now we're going to need to figure out what we need to do uh, for dx. So what are the limits of integration? Well, um, we are going from 0 to 2, right? We're going, we're integrating in this direction. So, same thing here. Um, also, from regular calc, you would do right minus left, right? So, the first thing that you touch here is the right, and then the left. So, um, yeah, so these are going to be our limits of integration. So, we'll plug those in there. Okay, so now let's actually get to the um, solving part. So we're going to do the first part. Um, we'll go back to this problem later, or this portion. This is another, is this, okay, to clarify, you have two options to figure out how you want to integrate. Um, I chose to do this one, but I'll also go over how to do this as well. Um, okay, so, okay, so we have our double integral here. So the first thing we're going to do is just going to focus on what's on the inside. So, when integrating, we're going to be integrating with respect to y, so we're going to treat x as a constant, kind of like in partial derivatives. Okay, so what we do, um, uh, pretty much it's the power rule, but for antiderivatives, so you would have y squared over 2, but since we're treating x as a constant, the x just tags along for the ride. Um, and since this is a definite integral, we're going to have to evaluate that from 0 to x. And remember that those we have set for y. So wherever you see, looks like I got cut off, but remember you're gonna these are where you're gonna put in for your y's or for the limits of integration. So um, if you get if you solve that using the fundamental theorem of calculus, you will get x to the fourth over two minus zero. And just to clarify how I got that, I simply uh, plugged in an x. Um, for where I saw y, and since x is squared, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. And then you also have to um, subtract when you plug in zero, but when you plug in zero, you get zero. Um, okay, so the next part, uh, we have this right now, but remember that was only what was in the parentheses before, but now we just evaluated what was in the parentheses. So now we got to keep going. And look at that, you're back to your regular integration or definite integral. Um, so it's just simple simple math or simple calculus now. So back to 1D or 2D calc. Um, reverse power rule would give you x to the fifth and then you also multiply that by the bottom so 5 times 2 would be 10 and you evaluate that from 0 to 2 and we would plug in those values and that would give us x Oh, wait, 30, yeah, 32 x to the fifth, so 2 to the fifth is 32 over 10 minus 0, which would be 3.2. Boom. Awesome. So that's our integral, that's our answer. So that was for this problem here. Um, now we're going to do the same problem 
Um, just evaluating it differently. Instead of using dy dx, we're going to use dx dy. And uh, what I'm going to try to prove to you is is that you have a choice, right, in choosing which way to do it. Um, and both of the ways that you do it will give you the same answer. So we should get 3.2 for the next one here. So let's try it. So now going back to the graph, um, since we have to the, change our limits of integration again. Um, since remember we're, now we're having x as our first integral that we will evaluate, we have to change our bounds. Uh, now we're going to evaluate in this direction first, and then we're going to evaluate our integral in this direction second. So this way, um, let's see. So remember, the basic technique is right minus left, r minus l, right minus left, whatever. Um, so on the right, we have, we're hitting x equals 2, and on the left, we have y equals x. But we're going to have to convert that into, um, or at least this portion here, um, into x equals y, which in this case is really easy. You just literally write x equals y. Um, and the reason is that um, that's why you put these here to know what, exactly what you're doing. So, but since we're doing right minus left, that means y equals x will be, or x equals y will be on the bottom here. And then we have x equals 2 as our second limit of integration. 2. Okay, so that covers the inside. Now we got to do um, the outside. Okay. So we'll be integrating um, from the, let's see, so this is y equals now. So that means we're going to be starting from 0 to 2, and that means we'll go up that way. So, that means our bounds here are also 0 and 2. Cool. Okay, now to the actual evaluating portion. Okay, let me erase this. Okay, so remember whenever you have the problem which you set up, you still want to um, label your limits of integration. And then, to make life easier, just so you can see it, also separate what you have, what you're going to work with. So right now we're just focusing on the inside integral. Okay, so here we go. So since we're treating this, uh, since we're doing this with respect to x, we're going to be treating y as a constant. So the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3. And since y is a constant, it would just tag along for the ride. And we'll have that. And we're evaluating this at from x equals 2 to um, x equals y. And you'll just plug those values in for x using the fundamental theorem of calculus. We know that um, the antiderivative is f of b minus f of a. And to do that, we will plug in our answers. So 2 cubed would be 8 over 6, which I'm just going to simplify now, is 4 over 3 y minus y cubed over 3 times y, which is just y to the 4th over y, or over 3, sorry. And that'll be um, our evaluated integral. Now we're going to do the second part. Um, so we have, that was our first integral, so now we're going to do the second part, dy. And that was from y equals 0 to y equals 2. And now you're back to simple um, antiderivatives and one-dimensional calculus. So now we're just doing this with respect to y. I'm going to do this on a separate slide here. Okay, so now we just uh, evaluate our integral. So that would be y squared. And then you have 3 times 2, which would be 6, because the square would come down here, minus y to the 5th over 5 times 3, which would be 15. And that evaluated from 0 to 2. Let's see, that would be 16 over 3 minus 32 over 15. And that will give you 3.2. 
check it out. So 3.2 is equal to 3.2, just like we did here. Oh, I already erased it. Dang it. Okay, but this came out to be 3.2, as you can check in the if you rewind the video. And this is also 3.2. So there's just two different ways of evaluating the same integral. Um, it's your choice. Whichever way you like doing it um, is, or whichever, yeah, whichever, whichever way you want to do it, you do it that way. And just keep practicing, but I'd suggest to practice both ways because sometimes you won't be able to evaluate the integral using the way, that, using your preferred method. Um, there's, that's why this method is going to be later used, but this is just a basic example, so we'll save that for another day.